are cleaning up. In mind, oh well, it's yeah. I mean, they, the they can't thing. not. <laughs> right. <coughs> That's cool. All right. So uh -huh. first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna play play the. Uh, what did you say? Speeding. No Speeding can't. Yeah. Okay. Welcome to Surfland. Yes. No. Chris, can you just tell me, that, or, or Billy, if you can tell me what this song is? La last right in. It's last song mixed. <laughs> it's last song mixed. mixed. <laughs> it's about. Uh, it's not about. It's not, not about any. It's, there's no lyrics to it. It's just an instrumental. Like mm -hmm. it's like it's a surf. surf. It's about taking a break. Taking a break. From all your worries. Sure, we help a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Something that's let you relax between all the other slow numbers. Over there. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> to have okay. a little break. Yeah. As you'll find yeah, out here in three. Thanks. Something to wake up to. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>
That's so funny. You should have somebody, oh. a kid, drowning at the end. Last wow. breath out. Wow. <laughs> that, that song's also called uh, Smoke Em If You Got Em. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Well, as I would imagine, I, a lot of people would say a surprise for, um, well, the, one of the many surprises from what I've heard from, you know, from this record. Mm. Probably the biggest surprise. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm with the wrong I'm, I'm still surprised right now. So how does this work? Like, so this is, this is the first time you guys have listened to it in a, in a mixed form to this song? Yeah. yeah. And then do you, do, sometimes do you change it quite a bit from that point, from the first listen through, or? We can make it silly, right? We can turn it into a punk song. <laughs> we mix anything that's not cool and, yeah. you know, anything we're not, we're not into, and anything we are into, maybe bring it up a little louder. Just make sure you know, the whole track fits together. Make sure it all kind of meshes together. Are there, for, with an instrumental, is it any different than, than a, well, a th vocal? I think this would be a lot more subjective because it's, Pretty much there was a lot of elements on here, mm -hmm. and I created like a canvas for them. So this is a little, a lot different than some of the other songs we mix, yeah. because most of the straight ahead songs that we have done, they already know exactly what they should sound like. Right. So it's like, wow, that's really good, except that one harmony is a little bit too loud, or that one's too low, or, or this bass riff got to come out here, mm -hmm. or that guitar needs to come out here, mm -hmm. where well, this is more of an experiment for these guys. Yeah. So that if it first listens go, hmm, we had to hire this guy, didn't we? <laughs> um, right. So it's it's a whole different animal this this situation because it's more of a mood piece. What? How? This song kind of came about like we would have like small amps and um, a little drum set backstage mm -hmm. at, at our shows, and we'd end up just we like we did another surf song called uh, well it's more like a spy called espionage, um, espionage. Sure. and. Um, and that's where we would just get together and just play, and we just and it kind of was just sort of like a joke, sort of like goofing around or whatever. And then usually all of a sudden it's like this huge beast. Right. From being really <laughs> well, this is pretty. I mean, a lot of layers. To, I mean, the xylophone and everything. Is that what that was? Marimba. 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 It's a real, real lazy songs. Like after the show or something, we'd be just covered in sweat, laying down, half holding our guitars, playing this, you know, just uh -huh. to relax. <laughs> right. And it was like I don't know. It turned out to be a. Something we like doing, so that's it's kind cool. of fun, you know. That's cool. Are you looking forward to seeing how people react to sort of different, maybe unexpected things on this record than what people might associate with the I'm band? just looking forward to hearing the album no. done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, no. it's like we, I mean, I personally, I fell into this record so hard, you know, like the past, we've been recording it for like four months. Yeah. And um, there's a certain thing, like, because after this, it doesn't really belong only to us anymore, right. you know, and, and I don't know that, like, personal attachment that, that I have to it isn't going to be there anymore, so. Kind of don't want to give it away, yeah. but we have to. You know? Yeah, <laughs> it's like, you know, it's the same, it's like putting a big giant steak out for the lions to eat, you know. Do you feel that way more now, having this be your fifth record? I mean, did you feel less that way, say, Say with with Dookie, were you just totally ha you know optimistic about what the response was going to be? And are you now more kind of you know? I think know, we just didn't have it? a clue with Dookie. Yeah. Yeah. We were just kind of like put it out, and whatever happens, can't be any worse than anything we've done already. Uh -huh. You know. Yeah. Um, I mean, whereas, yeah. like uh, you know, with Dookie, it was like you know, it, it, we had no idea how it was going to turn out. You know, because it was basically, you know, punk rock up until that point. It, you know, you don't make money off of right. like being a punk rocker or whatever, you know, so. Yeah. So we had no idea. Oh, yeah. <coughs> and they took our NST. It's, it's almost like people who've never seen it before. I mean, I've never been in a mixing session before, so I have no idea. So I'm like, you know, if you teach us, you Just go through and show them different instruments. First, we're going to show them something over here. Bongo Boy. Yeah. Where's Bongo Boy? Bongos on a Green Day record before? I think we got no one's ever played Bongos on a Green Day record. <laughs> <laughs> I played all the uh, harp. Uh, you played the harp? Oh wow. I'm sick. <laughs> I played the ocean. <laughs> Good work. I did. That's a guitar! Whack! 
Rocky. Huh? <laughs> you can't do this at home. Darth Vader and his boys coming to get ya. This is what the song was. So is this the way you had envisioned it, and then you just you just sort of added on, or? Well, we just sort of went for broke with it. It was yeah. like just, you know, we, it was just very simple, like little guitar thing, and then we just ended up with the little, you know, we talked talk to Rob about it, and he said, let's just, yeah. I mean, you go for it. You can kind of hear it. If you're playing a certain style of music, you can hear the instruments in it from, you know, subliminal influence growing up. Right. So we're silly like that. You know, freaks. we're saying, okay, well, I'm hearing, I'm hearing some bongos here, you know, uh -huh. I'm hearing some vibes here. That would be really cool, you yeah. know, and this and that. And so, same with the espionage thing. You kind of know yeah. the things that'll, that'll work. You kind of know, you know, like, oh, we want, you know, maybe some mariachis oh, here or this or that or whatever, you know. Yeah. It's not yeah. really good. Because it all, it all goes with a kind of a style of playing uh -huh. or. We turn on the water. This I played this myself yeah. actually. Ah oh, man, you make me. I gotta go pee now. <laughs> <laughs> Making me have to go to the bathroom. Oh yeah, look at those little. That was actually it's an sound. ocean of alcohol, folks. Sounds of Mike surfing. Oh. You play this one too, huh? No, that's that's like a Humphrey the Whale. Look down by the seaside. This was the old. Uh, where's that? Oh, uh, he only plays a little bit. I get a little small moment. <laughs> Back. Oh, yeah, Mariachi. Oh, yeah. Did you actually find one? El Cholo. Oh, yeah? Yeah. That's what he was talking about. Hey, Rocky. Yeah, that it's kind of good. Problem with snakes during this song. <laughs> yeah, we didn't charm all the snakes. But we had no mics. I think every orchestral instrument. Orchestral instrument. Or chestnut. Or chest. Or chest. For you, like like Mike was saying, it's obvious for a song like this what instruments would work with it, vibes or. Or, or something like this. Harp. Something like this. They put all these elements on, uh -huh. and I just kind of waded through it and made certain things highlight certain areas. Yeah. And so it was basically since I've already mixed 25 songs for you. Well, let me take a stab at this one and see how well I can do it. Yeah, yeah. Just establish the mood for like it's like the album closer here. Uh huh. You know, as far as the mixing. Now he has a giant rock ballad. <laughs> yeah. We're there. Horns and all. We're not going to hear this in a, like, in a Green Day your, live show, are we? No. no. <laughs> you might hear it if you came backstage after the show. You <laughs> might hear us jamming it. Yeah. It might yeah. sound a little bit different. Yeah. Yeah. Bring out the old Boston pop. We actually and recorded jam. this at the beach. Yeah. It's a funny thing. Yeah. You know, it was. It's kind of hard because the music stands kept sinking in the sand. I had to go back out of that beach and get those waves back on it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
<laughs> we went through like so many microphones like recording in the ocean. Yep. And the salt water gets in those bad boys. Yep. All the instruments kept sinking in the sand, so it was really difficult to Yeah. I played play. the bongos actually out at sea on it's a It's funny longboard. because we, we actually had a mermaid <laughs> play the harp. It was really nice. Should we play? The harp is now underwater. Yeah. 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 It was punk rock. Platypus. Yeah. Want to hear another song? Yeah, let's, let's yeah. hear something a little Jason, on the other gonna, side of the spectrum. Jason, we're going to play some these other tracks now. That's Now is that was that an early, early track? One of the last ones you did, or kind of? I think it was like somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. It was recorded like, like it was probably like the eleventh or twelfth song that we recorded. Small mic. Was was most of this stuff was uh, was most material stuff that you had done over a period of, of time, or stuff that you wrote specifically for this record? Or? Well, most of the writing on the record has been done like within the past year and a half. But there, John. Yeah. We're back. I'm sorry. Oh, it blew out the light. No. Which light went out? Well. I asked one of your your guys, it's a hundred watt light, plug him back in. He said it could. All right, I'll turn something off, maybe the gate. Okay. Back. I don't know. Yeah, it's a small light. <laughs> no, we're exactly. <laughs> since we're supposed to turn it on. Uh, rolling again in ten minutes, anyways. Yeah. Right, about halfway through, just yeah, fade it down. He was saying he just wanted us to talk, like play the first half of the song. Oh, the okay. Yeah. Right. That was a little Nothing. too low. <laughs> 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 We can talk over that. Yeah. Well, you see, the thing we do with this song is turn it up. So what should we hit next? Uh, talk about that track. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, so Platypus, you were saying that was that was one. A lot of the stuff was done the last year and a half, the stuff that was written for the record. Yeah, this song has probably been written in the past year and a half. And... Um, but there's also some other stuff. There's a song like Good Riddance, which was written right after we got done re recording Dookie. And then there's another song called H Hashinka, which was originally supposed to go on Dookie, but we decided last night not to put it on, which is now going on this record. Which I asked, I, I knew that name. If you guys ever done that live, Hashinka, was that ever in a, or I've read about it somewhere? Or? No, I think what what happened was like we, we gave someone a tape of, of that song, and then it kind of filtered out like, the, like I think it was on the web that I actually yeah, read about it yeah there, some kids ended up getting a hold of it and like mm -hmm. the they kept on writing me about it and stuff so decided to put it yeah, yeah. so w were you actually writing stuff 
after you know when you were touring for Insomniac, were you actually writing for this record? Can you write on the road like that? Well, that's kind of the, one of the reasons why we came home because I I don't like to write from like a road perspective, but I like mm -hmm. to be at, I like to be at home because it just likes more what real life experiences are and stuff like that. And and uh, and on the road, it's just like you know, last thing I want to do is be like, I'm a cowboy. <laughs> right. yeah. Road weary songs. <laughs> 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 Cool. So, um, any any preference for what we should do now, or let's break something else. Or? Let's play. Uh, let's, let's play the hitching ride. Yeah. Yeah. Hitching ride. Yeah. 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 Just the first single. Just the first single. Yeah. Right. Sure. Um, anything you want? Anything about this song you want to? It should speak for itself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay Falling off the wagon. Yeah. yeah. The song is well. I don't want to give that away. It's not really. It's diving. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's diving <laughs> off the wagon. And um, Petra from that dog. That dog, nice. yeah, Petra. She came, she played. Um, <laughs> that dog, Petra. That dog. <laughs> that dog. Oh, 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 no. No, yeah, 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 no, okay. <laughs> edit, 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 <laughs> edit, edit, edit. A lovely young woman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's a sweetheart. Yeah, she's pretty good. Yeah, she. Um, <laughs> that was awful. No, she. Oh, well, no. we had a space in the song. That we I just thought would violin should go, mm -hmm. so and we we actually dealt with people that are like more like professional players to play the violin part on it, but it just wasn't right. And Petra's got like a good rock, sensibility. yeah, rock sensibility and pop sensibility, mm -hmm. and she's also kind of weird, mm -hmm. so it kind of worked out. Cool. Hit it. It's all right. <laughs> And just when we thought it was going to be straight cat strut there at the top of it, it completely, uh, yeah, completely. I mean, that wasn't the initial connection I made, but yeah, there's a lot of people know, make yeah. that connection. I mean, straight cats were great, it's, yeah. all, it's, all, yep. it's also got a cat Callaway kind of a vibe, <laughs> yeah. Did you guys, either either Rob or, or you guys, did you did you really want you know consciously to, to bring in different things on this and be a little bit more? You know, try different things, different right. sounds on this record. And yeah, but to, but to go about it is like as like a natural process. We didn't uh -huh. want to completely break away from what we've done before. Right. You know, because I, I always hated bands that completely changed after. Yeah. You know, so we just that's why there's so many songs on this because we wanted to sort of bring out every side as possible. Well, it's definitely not a complete d uh, departure. I mean, there's uh -huh. there's plenty of, I guess what people would say, recognizable Green Day stuff on here. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. 
It, it's going to be what, like 20, 20 something tracks altogether? I think 19, 18? Uh huh. Around there. 18, 19, something like that. Mm -hmm. They got to put it on two vinyls. Remember that song? Uh, in the song an hour. He was 19. No, 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 19. Twice as long <laughs> as everything <laughs> we've ever done. So, uh, from what I could pick up from the lyrics of, of that one, um, it was it's a sort of, sort of like on the substance tip. Yeah, you know, a little bit. A little sort of a geek stink breath follow up, maybe. Well, it's more about alcohol. Oh, then. Then not, no. That, the, haven't, the I, haven't, I haven't been to, going there lately, so. Despite being in LA. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, that's, so that's the first single. Are you, do you guys get involved in, in choosing singles a lot? I mean, do you, do you let the label know what um, Well, I, I kind of, I mean, we sort of knew that this song was going to be, like, the first single. Uh-huh. You know, and then, and then the, you know, the, the people at the record label talked about it, too, and everyone sort of... Then we also got a radio reaction yeah. that, that seemed to confirm Billy's suspicions from the beginning, mm -hmm. that it was the right first single, so... Yeah. How much have you? Good. How much have you had a chance to to play this stuff live? Any of the any of the new stuff? I know you did the Viper Room. Show. We played the Viper Room and we played a club in Japan not too long ago. That's about it. Uh huh. And we played actually we played a party in Oakland in this warehouse <laughs> on Valentine's Day. On Valentine's Day. Nope. So it was just like just all of our friends and stuff. So. And even you had a lot of this stuff, this material at Valentine's Day that long ago. Oh yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Most of it, actually. Good, really? Yeah, the, 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 the record was basically was written, written was like before we went in the studio. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, writing in the studio is a really dumb idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. You've, you've, tried, you've done like that Like a finish-up thing or something. That's, that's one thing. But that's a lot of you don't have any the songs. studio just with like a few songs and then write the rest of the record in the studio, which can be, it can be really good and it can be really bad. We just assume write them at home uh -huh. and wean out anything we don't like. But we like practiced in a garage, the same garage we've been practicing in since we were practicing the song up there. And uh, we just made sure that all the songs were super tight before we even yeah. booked any studio time. Yeah. So what do you want to, any, any preference, Jason? Did Scatter. you want What? Scatter. Scatter. One of them was the, was the hit. Mbop. Look at this yeah. magic. Oh, Oh yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. No, is fucking dying. Yeah, that's 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 that's, a, that's, a, that's one of those the songs. The whole album, or just the, the whole just, yeah. That's one of those songs where that's the only. Okay. Mix it. Songs where you only know that lyric. Mixed, scattered, smothered, covered. You're going to get kicked. <laughs> <laughs>
I guess I guess the song that people would say is kind of more you know characteristic Green Day. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, is there any any particularly so story behind that song or where that came about? Uh, it's a song. It's about my wife, mm -hmm. Adrian. It's rock and roll, and I wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> it's good that you guys know each other so well. That's we share everything. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> oh, that was bad. You didn't know. God, it doesn't get any uglier than that. Uh, um, I, was just, I, was, <laughs> I was just saying to Rob that it seems like with this record and um, I, maybe a couple tracks from Insomniac, but the sort of like sweeter kind of harmonies in the mm -hmm. vocals are, are more pre from some of the songs I've heard on this are, are more present on, on this kind of thing. Is that is that something you, you enjoy going more in that kind of direction, poppier oh. kind of? Uh, well, you know, we we're actually the, our first record, which uh, <coughs> like 1,030 nights moved out slappy hours was really was, <laughs> was that I mean our our first one is really poppy, uh -huh. you know, and had like harmonies all over it and stuff, and and really re and thinking about it now, it's sort of like kind of going back to that a little more, I think, mm -hmm. like for a couple songs. Second, even the second record for Plunk had a lot of harmonies on it, you know. Mm -hmm. A song called Words I Might Have Ate that was just like acoustic with all harmonies and everything, and we went away from that and more to basic, just hard-hitting rock and roll, right. and now we're kind of just going back in, into hard-hitting sing-song rock and roll. I, it you know? struck me on like um, 86 on the last record that it sort of, there was a little bit more of that, and for some reason that song stood out when I first listen to that record mm. is for that reason in terms of like just you know the vocal the you know the harmony kind mm -hmm. of thing um so you're not necessarily want to do more of that just it seems to be going in that that direction yeah like you know i mean wherever you know whatever yeah. happens happens you know i mean i think i you know i was a really big fan of like husker do mm -hmm. and they and bob mold and grant hart had that great like they had had their voices went really well together and, mm -hmm. and that's sort of like what i but, you know, I kind of wanted to achieve, too, for this band, so. Now, in addition to Scattered, there's another track that was sort of about your wife, too, right? I think that... Yeah, there's a the bunch thing. of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Billy wrote them all. I wrote them all. Is that, do you, is that you know, f sort of family kind of thing? Does that influence, impact a lot more your writing now, do you think, or...? Um, not any more than when I wasn't married, you right. know. But, um, it's just, I mean, we... I kind of wanted to, you know, I, to write about, like, my son a little bit, my wife a little bit, because that's really significant in my life, right. you know? So, I mean, it's, that's all. Is it in, it, do you think this record is, I know a lot of people talked about in, Insomniac being kind of dark, perhaps maybe in comparison to Dookie anyway, lyrically, is, is this any less so, do you think? Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's, I'm sorry, what was some, that? Is it not as dark a record lyrically, do you think, as Insomnia? There's some dark songs. Oh, yeah. we can play them Take Back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, and on that note, there's, <laughs> there's, 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 it's like, I mean, some of this. Dookie this, was kind of an action. Mm -hmm. Insomniac was a reaction to all that had happened to us. And now, now we're on a creative path again, just kind of like, you know, right. striving for another action. And this is kind of just something, you know, I don't know. There's, there's some of the most aggressive, you know, punk rock stuff we've ever done. Is mm -hmm. on this record right. probably the most aggressive punk rock stuff, and you know, and yet some of the like the most straightforward, you know, punk pop stuff, I guess, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it. Pretty, pretty yeah. songs. Yeah. We have pretty right. stuff. On yeah, it. it's pretty <laughs> it's aggressive. Uh, There's a lot more sides to the band are represented on this album, I think. Yeah. Than in, in some of the previous ones, because we're getting a, a lot of different styles of songs on this record. Mm -hmm. Whereas maybe Insomniac was really hard driving. Yeah. You know, I mean, to a point, it was hard driving, and this one, you know, we're getting a lot of the different angles and the different things that these guys are into. Stuff that maybe you, you'd wanted to do for a while and weren't ready to do on the last record, or well, it didn't fit with the, with the, time, the yeah. like the mindset we were in on the last record. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, it and it all basically comes down to three instruments. You know, bass, drums, and guitar. Mm -hmm. You know still kind of the same premise any good rock and roll song should be able to be played on an acoustic guitar and still be mm -hmm. a good song so despite the fact that the, there may be horns on one track or yeah or i mean strings on another as we broke that down for you i still you know yeah. still think that's just a little flavor it's a great song you know with mm -hmm. or without all the extra stuff yeah you know we do you, do you see yourselves having any extra musicians out with you when you go no it's not record? not yeah we're gonna yeah, call it opening band <laughs> Actually, <laughs> on stage with you. <laughs> no, 
<laughs> well, we were thinking about hiring Millie Vanilli. Which one? Millie or Vanilli? They don't get along anymore. Just to dance. Just to dance behind us. One of us. them got arrested, right? For, like, beating someone up in Hot. Hollywood. Oh, Hot. Six months ago. It was probably Millie. I heard he had a bad temper. <laughs> Millie? Or, no, no, it might have been Vanilli. You never know. <laughs> cool. Um, should we hear... Someone called him Vanilli Ice. Ice. He he's a girl, man. Yeah. Yeah. King for yeah, a day? That probably, probably is. Can you t tell me anything about that before we listen to that, King for a Day? Um, this song is about <laughs> dressing in drag. And it's pretty macho. There you go. Macho's you know, Mike, well, the whole thing is to try, that, like, the, uh, the idea behind it is to try to get, like, fraternity guys, like, singing, like, an oi song, but singing about dressing in drag. <laughs> <laughs> you will pr so provide lyrics <laughs> yeah. with this? Yeah. <laughs> okay, but they just won't know what's, what's <laughs> right. going on, you know? They're like, King sure. for a day. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. What's that next line? It's like Princess. No, never mind. <laughs> so it, it shouldn't be Queen for a day, then, if it's... Well, you gotta hear it. Okay, okay, okay. It's Queen of Are um, if anyone Stephen Gabriel, yeah. Gabriel, Stephen Gabriel, they're the guys that play live with no, no doubt. doubt. No doubt, yeah, they're really good. Yeah, mm -hmm. great, great really guys. Good guys. Did great you guys. know them already? And well, I, I Steve's from Richmond, actually. Yeah, he's from East Bay. Yeah, I slept with him, but I don't really know him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're a slut, Mike. <laughs> That's what they said. <laughs> they were just, Yeah, I, we had a lot of fun with we just like sat around and drank beer and mm -hmm. they yeah. played horns for it, you know. So yeah. and well, I mean, lest, lest anyone well, read too much into this sort of drag thing and, and think, you know, that there's any autobiographical sort of storyline here, I you know. Oh yeah. Great. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> right. This is your chance to give a disclaimer. <laughs> yeah, you know. Right. Well, you've, I mean, you've even sported a frock now and then on stage. And a what? A, 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 full dress. a dress? Yeah. Well, I've sported absolutely nothing on stage <laughs> yeah, that, Yes, you have. You, you've true. sported a frocking dress <laughs> right. on stage right. Right. Yeah. But no Well, once I, I wore a slip, this pink slip that had all these flowers on it, real pretty uh -huh. get-up I was wearing, and uh, I had no underpants on. Uh, my so, I, so you can imagine, like, you know, like my jumps, people get a little mm -hmm. more of yeah. their they bargain for <laughs> on stage fans like the Marilyn Monroe effect. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I used to wear a pink tutu. That was kind of nice. And Mike used to have a really beautiful like Heidi 
sort of thing. It was very it's really the lighter like, hosen. Yeah, yeah it was it helps scary. me make. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I was a babe. Were you? Oh, yeah. Okay. I was a uh, very androgynous at the time. Oh. Ah. Now I've uh, I've passed that point. <laughs> now I'm just ugly. Uh, right. <laughs> Um, any any others that you guys? Well, I think you were talking about that. Oh, that's right. That's they promised me that I would be uh, I would be a little, a little well, surprised with good riddance. That there's a. Oh, he's coming. Oh, yeah. Oh. Okay. Sorry about that. So, uh, what are we doing here? Are we playing another one? Did you need a rest yeah. or something? Good riddance. Yeah, my shoulder needs a rest. You need like one of those like. You just do your job. Right? <laughs> you, you can tell the senior cameraman because they get so, really so fucked. Another turning point, a fork stuck in the road. Tom grabs you by the wrist, directs you where to go. So make the best of this test and don't ask why. It's not a question, but a lesson learned in time. It's something unpredictable, but in the end is right. I hope you had the time of your life. So take the photographs and still frames in your mind. Hanging on a shelf in good health and good time Tattoos and memories and dead skin on trial For what it's worth, it was worth all the while It's something unpredictable, but in the end is right I hope you have the time of your life Nice. Is that something you've had for a while? You wanted to do? Yeah. For a while? Well, I, yeah. I, I, like I said, told you about that about before. I wrote this back in, like, right after Dookie came uh -huh. out. And um, I don't know. I mean, there was no way I wanted to put it, like something like this on Insomniac or anything right. like that. So, but this time it was just opportunity to to do something different, you know. Uh huh. And is I mean, doing something like this. I mean, it really, I mean, broadening this the the. The sound of this record. I mean, is it? Are the? I guess are the kids gonna? Are the kids gonna get it? You know. I mean, the people who are hard, sort of hardcore Green Day fans. Or you know, it, I, I yeah. really don't give a shit. It's yeah. like I get it. Yeah. We're really selfish. It, I'm, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's a song. It's a song. It's really personal to me. Yeah. You know. And um. You know, I don't really care. It's yeah. like it's not about that right. at all for me at all. It's like I just want to. Make before, best. like I before I am, I, I would ever consider myself a punk rocker. Before that. I'm a songwriter, right? You know, so I'm like any way to branch out and just keep a, like a <coughs> direction and going down different avenues uh -huh. with it is. is much so, was bad. there one story incident that sort of inspired this song? Mm, I probably can't talk about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, right. And the strings in this are these the ones that um, Beck's dad worked on? Is yeah. This yeah, yeah, yeah. How about David Campbell? David Campbell. David, yeah, yeah. He looks exactly like his son. Does he? Or vice versa. <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably vice versa. <laughs> There's some weird stuff going on around here. <laughs> so, what is it like when you guys are working? It's been four months working on this, mm -hmm. this record. Mm -hmm. Three months, four months. Do you? And and I know you said you've been going back to to Bay Area most of the time on the on the weekends. But do you do you find that your like lifestyle changes when you're working on a record? Do you? Do you live any less healthy? Do you do you? I mean, trace trace like smoking the butts over there. I mean, is it like, do you do more of that when you're working on a record? Do you? I don't smoke cigarettes. You just, oh. you just, uh, I just want to promote. 
<laughs> it's a whole different mental frame, you know. Yeah. You really, you, you find yourself just in this whirlwind of, of music and just constantly going through whatever you're doing, like tracking these songs or or vocals or whatever, and you find yourself just concentrating all your energies on that and other other parts of your life have a tendency to fall apart uh -huh. while you're <laughs> focusing on something exactly. that you really want to make happen. Which, ha you know, and then your time outside of the studio is really dedicated to stressing out about all the shit that fell apart in your life. Yeah. But for the most part, I mean, we just we just get in there and we focus every bit of our energies into the songs, you know, because that's what we're here for, you know. And if we don't do that right, then we kind of fail, you know. So. Do you find that if there's too many distractions, be it home life, friends, family, whatever, that just gets in the way of what you're doing? I mean, do you have to sh kind of shut yourself off from things or...? Um, yeah, pretty kind of much. Yeah, yeah. You, I mean, yeah. And they, isolation. It's a yeah. very compromising position, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, and all the distractions that uh, that Hollywood might have to offer don't really get to you. No, we're too busy working like twelve, fifteen hours a day in yeah. the studio. So, mm -hmm. you know, Holly Weird has nothing to do with that. Although it is a city of angles. <laughs> <laughs> have you have Have you been able to like? When, do you when you're working on a record? Do you have time like? To relax, do you get away and do things here, or like, I mean, um, it's pretty really minimal, yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, remember that one time we went out? That was cool, and it was hot outside, that was great, yeah. That was cool, <laughs> well, and it was it. night, it's Weird. been hot for a while, it's been hot. really. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, I, I think <laughs> this record more so than the other res records, I think we sort of bled over this one a little more, yeah, just because it, it, we took more time. We Got, you know, we, we you get this thing called studio itis where mm -hmm. like you'll be listening and everything sounds like shit, like everything is out of tune, and like in it's like the wrong tempo or something, you know. So, which not, comes and goes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you come back in the next day and it sounds great. And you're like, ah, what happened to my ears? You know, but it's all panned. Do you out go now. back and forth on the on the idea of like how sort of you know clean or pristine you want the, a record to, a given record to sound? Like, do you want or as opposed to how maybe live or raw you want it to sound, or like, will you leave in mistakes, for instance? You yeah. know, if you. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, not all the time, but uh -huh. you know, like I, I, we had this what problem. What mistakes, John? I don't. <laughs> John, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> well, like one problem we we would have is after every take, Trey would throw his sticks. Oh yeah. And then it would fall on the floor, so it was the, those were. Mm -hmm. Getting to be kind of a pain. My bad. They're, <laughs> kind of all, they're kind of all over the record due to that. <laughs> really? Wow. It's it's this bad habit I have. Yeah. When it's a it's live a good thing. take too. It's only when it's a good take. When it's like when it's it and I know it's it, I'm all yeah. <laughs> 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 it just ruined it. It's a, it's a live reflex reaction. Totally. Yeah. So you don't necessarily. I mean, you don't go back and. and Time and time and time again to get something absolutely perfect. You'll just live with. Some, Usually live it takes one time. Really, you are pretty infallible, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> one. Actually, yeah. Uh, she'd have told me that a couple months ago. I don't, I don't like. I don't like chicken. Yeah, it goes back. <laughs> <laughs> Other than that, perfection. Per, you know. Yeah. Each song is different. You know, it depends on the difficulty of the song. And who knows? I mean, even when the song's really difficult, we might just nail it. You know, uh -huh. and there could be a simple song that we just keep making stupid mistakes on. You know, like you'll, you'll be in the middle of playing. You're like, yeah, this is a great take. Huh. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> no other time in life does your nose itch that bad. <laughs> 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 Wow. So bad. Like, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> then your headphones turn on you. You're like <laughs> three quarters of the way through the song. <laughs> I'm not sure which song it was, but one of these songs I, I recorded like this. Yeah, his headphones turned completely on. And I just like yeah, felt the beat through the nerve, <laughs> through the veins in his forehead. I'm a very thin <laughs> skull. <laughs> do you do you ever listen to? Are there any old? tracks that you just say to yourself, well, every time you hear it, you wish you'd done this again, or you wish you'd done something differently, or... No, no, not really. no. no. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's some songs hey, yeah, that we okay. played. Ego. <laughs> there's some songs that had a little bit from playing live, there's little bits and stuff that, that came out later on that were, like, really cool, but mm -hmm. that's what live's right. all about. Yeah. That's what makes a live show better than right. the record a lot of the time, you know? Didn't you guys have a live... Or just different, I would say, you know? Didn't you have a live record come out in, in Japan or something? Yeah, we had yeah. two. 
Uh -huh. like, like one was called Foot and Mouth, and the other was called um, bowling, 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 parking, parking. Now, is there a reason you didn't put those out here, or just? Uh, it was pretty much like a, an exclusive yeah. Japanese. Well, they were thing. pretty much recorded in Japan too, you mm -hmm. know. So it was for the kids that got to go to the show too. Yeah, you got to watch out for live records because there's a certain taboo in putting out a live record. Yeah. Even like Peter Frampton. <laughs> 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 Even for you guys, I mean, I think a lot of people would say that that's the way Green Day is best experienced is mm -hmm. live. I mean, even so, you still wouldn't want to put one out, probably. No, we'll put out, we'll put out yeah. a live record when we're dead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so speaking of Japan, I understand you were supposed to play the Mount Fuji thing, right? The, yeah. The ill-fated. Mm -hmm. <coughs> ah. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Typhoon. Yeah, I heard about. Uh, we just did really? a thing with. We just did a thing with uh, Rage last weekend, and they mm -hmm. were telling us how they barely got in their set. Yeah, I guess. barely got out alive. Yeah, they got away from us. <laughs> and. Um, <laughs> But you did play, you managed to play a club show over there? Yeah, right? we yeah. played, uh, what was the name of that club? The Area. Area. We played the Area in Tokyo. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was packed. It was, pat, it was like, like 500 people in like a 250 200? capacity. Wow. It was and very, so it was, uh, Yeah, I was dying like the whole time. And bleeding. And bleeding. I had blood everywhere. everywhere. Yeah, right before we went on stage. <laughs> he cuts himself. He's cutting our roadies hair and he cuts his finger. He's like, Shit. <laughs> I gotta play on this. So he's playing and there's just blood all over his guitar and his hand and his arm. He's just like... Oh, no. I know, and, and, and needless to say, sucks. it looked damn good. It, it looked cool. Don't get he me hands me this. He hands me this scab of a guitar to play, right? Like, when we switch up on this one song, he's all, here, I'm all... <laughs> Trey's all putting on surgical that? gloves, getting ready to play a song. He's cool, though. You know? Here, play a right. song. That's Hold on, let me get my gloves. That's right. So. Wives, blood... <laughs> <laughs> no. Anyway, should we do one more? I don't know. We're, we're done then.